Hey guys, welcome back to Let's Build Stindustry Oil Platform. Now, I know what you're thinking. We've got a village to build. What happened to our little settlement on the border of our fancy kingdom? There was still so much to do. We only had half the buildings, there was tons of empty space, and the place kind of lacked a bit of heart and soul, to be honest. Well, don't worry, we'll be coming back to the village, but, uh, but at, a at a later date. Because for now, we're going to be building some kick-ass tech it mega structures. Now, starting with an oil platform, a technological marine fortress, packed to the brim with all the technology required to pump the deepest oil wells of the ocean biomes. I scanned the uh, the ocean for a long time to track down the perfect oil spout, and, uh, and it wasn't easy because these things have been kind of rare in our seed for some reason, but once I did, and here you can see us coming up on it, once I tracked this baby down, it was time to set down the foundations for our oil platform. Now, first things first, I needed to measure things out. So I found out where the middle of the well was, built a small circle around it, and then in four directions, placed out iron prongs, and began to map out a square with the oil well itself perfectly in the middle. And then I marked the corner of those squares with a little bit of glowstone so that you guys could see it at night and so that I had points of reference that I could build the uh, cylindrical support platforms around. And then it was time to get out our old friend the Minecraft Circles sheet. You can get the Minecraft Circles picture just by googling Minecraft Circles and uh, a bunch of images of the precise block placements you'll need to get a kind of blocky circle in Minecraft. Now I put down, uh, I think it was um, 14 radius circles at the corner of the square with the glowstone block centered in those circles and I used iron scaffold to make those circles. Once the foundations of those were down, it was time to build up and bring the iron, the iron scaffolds to the surface of the water. Now I didn't want these, these scaffold pillars to be hollow on the inside. I needed uh, them to have some kind of weight to them. So what I wanted to do was build a circle of iron scaffold and then a circle one smaller inside the scaffold of iron so that it gave the impression that there was iron behind it but the layer of scaffold with the see-through prongs gave it a little bit of depth which we wouldn't have because we wouldn't have any um, decoration on the outside of the pillars themselves so that the pillars would look a bit flat without that scaffold. Two pillars down and two to go. This is probably the longest part of this build, but probably the most important as well. Getting these the right space apart and getting them perfectly aligned with the well itself is very important for the look of the overall platform itself. And another key thing is that when we took the scaffold above the water level, we had to bring it up high enough for the rest of the building not to be out of proportion with the pillars themselves. I looked at a lot of pictures of oil platforms, and whenever you're building a mega structure like this, it's ideal to have a reference picture to go off if you want to build a copy of something, but I don't really do it like that most of the time. What I like to do is check out multiple pictures of multiple oil platforms and multiple structures, and pick out the best features, the key features that you like from each structure, and kind of imagine them in your head, and build something in your head that represents what you want your oil platform to look like. So after I'd come up a reasonable distance with the iron scaffolds, the pillars were almost complete. And now it was time to build the interior. But I'd had an idea. I wanted to use red red lamps, red glow, glowing lamps on the inside of the pillars, so that when a ship was coming across the ocean, they wouldn't crash blindly into a dark oil platform they'd see, and here you can see the red lamps, they'd see these red lamps lighting up in the night, and so they'd keep, keep safe and keep away from, from the hazardous obstruction that is the oil platform. And then 
These iron blocks were put in place because the redstone needed to light the lamps, needed somewhere to be put, and I used redstone wire here from Red Power to build a system that would light the rings, the various redstone lamp rings up concentrically, so that it would start on the bottom layer of the redstone lamps, come up to the second layer, end of the third, and then they'd all go out. To get this effect I needed to use repeaters there. You see a normal redstone repeater on the first level, the second level, and then I had to put one on the top level as well, as you see me building there. Add the delay, and then you should be able to see me get the redstone working. So any ship coming from afar would see this effect as the lights travel up the pillar. Magnificent. And this is an effect that I wanted to repeat on all the pillars. So you see me here going around the outside of the pillars, adding the redstone lamps, and using machine blocks to fill in the empty spaces in between the lamps so that the pillars looked a bit more solid and not just like a, a layer of scaffold that was completely see-through. Now machine blocks aren't something you'd usually build with because they're so expensive to make. I think you need, it would be eight refined iron, but aside from being used in recipes, they can actually be used as a build, building block and they have a nice cool kind of iron effect with a little bit of corrugation. And then once those were complete, and the redstone was finished being wired up, it was time to build the platform itself. And the platform itself was going to be square. I considered the idea of having a circular platform on top of the four pillars, but looking at reference pictures, I, I, I couldn't find a single oil platform that was circular. And I thought, well, okay, square works. It's a bit more rust, a bit more primitive, a bit more industrial. So uh, I stuck with the square and began to build, as you see, this colossal square of wood. Now, the wood itself was something I wasn't quite sure on. I mean, there are no oil platforms in the world that are made of wood, for quite obvious reasons, I suppose. But for the time being, I built it from wood. And then once the platform itself was complete, it was time to map out the spire, a central tower right in the centre of the platform that was going to hold the housing for the pump itself. I, m I mapped out exactly where the middle of the, uh, the oil well itself was, dug a cross, and then used that cross to flesh it out into a square. And then uh, I added these iron scaffolds in as scaffolding and then wooden steps to give this crisscross effect as support for the structure as it travelled upwards. And I wanted to stagger the, the pyre itself into three levels, each level of course supported by those wooden steps, upside down a normal way up, in the crisscross effect. It just makes it look like cool kind of larger scaffolding. And then finally the peak of the pyre, this is where the drill itself was going to be housed. And at the top what I want to do is build some kind of flame spout, like you might see in traditional old oil rigs, to get rid of gas, where the gas releases, they can just light up a, f a flame plume right at the top of the oil platform and it'll shine out across the darkness of the ocean. I came back to the edge of the platform itself, went one level down with wooden blocks so that I could build the scaffold on top of it and then put down a wooden scaffold here before adding scaffold crenellations albeit being chased by a frantic zombie for half of the journey but then ultimately I came back and I thought well wood? no I don't think so change the wood into iron blocks then change the wooden scaffold into iron scaffold and added iron fence posts along the edge I then came back 
to the spire itself and where I'd built the bottom layer a little bit lower I decided to go up a couple of blocks higher I think it was so that I got a proper X from the wooden steps and then I filled out those blocks deleting the blocks and replacing them with wooden steps so that I could get a slicker smoother crisscross effect from the wooden supports. It also let me stagger the level just inside the bottom which I think overall was a pretty nice effect. And here you see me finishing up those crisscrosses on every single square now with the wooden steps. And from time to time breaking a few scaffolds as I took out some wooden blocks. Because the way scaffold works in Tekkit is it needs to be supported by a block underneath. While most blocks in Tekkit can hang out on their own in empty space, scaffolding cannot. It needs to be supported. And with the pyre, that's where we end our first episode of Shindustry. The redstone lamps lighting up to ward off ships and the pyre extending in the middle to house our oil pump. We're not finished with the oil platform, far from it. We're going to come back, add a combustion engine bay, oil tanks, fuel tanks, refinery section, living quarters, crane, loading bays, all the things you'd expect from an oil platform are going to be placed on this megastructure. So hit like and hit favourite if you want to see more and I'll see you guys